Good day, fellow scientists and other curious minds. Today's experiment is PCR, so one of the most fundamental experiments for any genetic or biochemistry lab. The first step is to mix the PCR, so make sure all their agents are combined together properly. Second step is to run the thermocycler with the correct protocol. And the third step is to make an agarose gel, run the gel, and then image the gel and see if we have a PCR product. If you try the PCR two or three times with a couple different annealing temperatures and it still doesn't work, you should probably go back and check the primer design because more often than not, that's what's causing the issues. Let's go get it started. Step one is preparing the PCR mix. First we add the water because it's the largest volume and it's easier to add other reagents to it. It also provides a space for the reaction to occur. Next, we add the buffer, which controls for pH and usually provides magnesium, which is a cofactor for polymerase. DNTPs are premixed building blocks of DNA, adenine, cytosine, thymine, and guanine. Some PCR reactions include DMSO, which helps reduce secondary DNA structures by binding cytosine residues. Primers are usually GC rich, so this helps them anneal to the template. The template DNA is usually either a plasmid for some sort of cloning, or a genomic DNA prep for whatever organism you're testing. We have to include primers, which are small bits of DNA, usually 20 to 30 base pairs in length, which are designed to be specific meaning they only bind the template in one location. My primers contain a part of a plasmid sequence that contains a marker and a part of an endogenous gene which will help guide the integration of my PCR product. Of course, we can't forget polymerase, which is the enzyme for nucleic acid synthesis. In my case, I'm using fusion, which is homemade and purified in our lab. It's very important to mix well by vortexing after you've added all the reagents. This is because DMSO and whatever the enzymes usually diluted in is more dense than water. We want all the reagents to be locally available for an optimal polymerase efficiency. I mix again by pipetting before distributing the master mix. In my opinion, there's no need to change tips in between tubes, and also you only need to use the first stage of the pipette between additions. As always, it's important to label with something distinguishable that you can recognize. Step two is to set up and run the thermocycler. The main steps in the thermocycle are denaturing, which occurs at 98 degrees, annealing, which I've set to 60 degrees, but can be anywhere from 55 to 63 degrees if you have some fancy primers, and extension, which happens at 72 degrees. And for fusion, it's uh, able to synthesize about one kilobyte every 15 seconds. Step three is to make an agarose gel so we can check the PCR. Most gels are made in a buffer tank with a gasket, but I just use the cassette with tape when I'm making a bunch of gels and I don't want to use a bunch of tanks. I'm going to aim to make roughly 1% agarose gel using 1x TBE. TBE is just tris and borate, which are slightly basic buffers, and they'll provide ions for the electrophoresis. EDTA, which is a collating agent for minerals like magnesium, we're using it to prevent enzyme activity in things like polymerase or nucleases. 
here you can see I've measured over 2.5 grams so I'll be slightly over my goal of 1% but it's insignificant for checking if there's a PCR product or not. You don't want to overboil the solution in the microwave or you'll lose volume and probably end up making a higher percent gel. You just want everything to be dissolved. Be careful when you're adding the ethidium bromide. As you can see, it's really concentrated here and it is a carcinogenic intercalating agent, meaning it binds to DNA, which is the reason we're using it. Another reason we're using it is because it's fluorescent under UV light, which will allow us to visualize the PCR product in the gel. Pour the gel after it's cooled enough to touch the side of the flask for a few seconds, you can put the comb in before or after, it's just more important you make sure it's clean. And then let them solidify for about 30 to 45 minutes. You can cut the gel to the appropriate size depending on the number of samples that are being run. And I like to use this method where we put loading dye in little drops on parafilm so we can basically just mix and load the samples immediately using the second stage of the pipette. You load the gel by placing the tip as close to the bottom of the well as you can and you slowly raise the tip out of the well as you're expelling the sample, allowing it to sort of settle as you go. When performing the electrophoresis, just remember run to red or that DNA is negatively charged and like charges repel, so you want to run the DNA away from the black wire in my case. You can run the gel for about 20 minutes or until the dye is about two-thirds down the gel. This depends on the size of the product you're looking for and what percent of gel you're running. The last thing to do is to image the gel. Make sure you use UV light so we can see the ethidium bromide that's bound to our PCR product. And then say a little prayer while you watch the loading bar go across the screen.